All right, hey everyone, we are uh, here with our virtual brewery event. Uh, we have uh, some, some very, some well, some kind of special guests today. Uh, I'll say of, of all the brewery tour events we do, these are probably be the lesser known uh, guests we have. No offense uh, to any of them, but um, as you all know, because of COVID-19, we've been forced to take this brewery tour virtually, like so much of our, our lives. So, uh, but we, we do want to continue to have these. We do want to continue to engage with folks and bring people on here. So I am uh, honored to have with me some very special guests, uh, members of my family. I, I've got uh, my brothers who you may have seen on TV ads uh, here recently on the call with us today. And so we're just gonna go over, uh, probably retell a few stories that may be embarrassing. Uh, and but I wanna give each of them a, a, a chance to introduce themselves, maybe say something about uh, themselves, maybe take a jab at another brother. I don't know where it's gonna go. And I think that's part of the fun in it here. Uh, so let's just start with the, uh, I guess we'll do oldest first, um, the, the number number one child. Uh, John, Shady. Let's take it the they are, John, John Ryan Cunningham. Take it away, John Ryan. Numero uno. I'm the oldest of the five boys. My name is John Ryan Cunningham. I live here in Asheville, North Carolina. I'm with the best craft beer ever made. Objection. Negative. Um, <laughs> My wife and I live here, and uh, I have six kids. I teach high school here and coach basketball, and uh, really proud of the stuff Joe's doing down there in the low country. It's exciting. I, I, I like getting down there any chance I can to, to kind of see what's happening and promote all the good things he's about. To, to eat those waves when you try to get up on them, too, right? That, too. Probably. Yes, washout. I love that place. Yeah, you love getting washed little, little barrels, little yeah. barrels, not little big ones, little barrels. Yes. You didn't cut, you didn't cut a wave in years. Let's start off with some brutal honesty here. we got to find a board big enough to float them first. You're out of order. Okay, <laughs> number two comes next. I'm number one, <laughs> then we'll go to number yeah, two. Not, number two, take it away. Your turn. Let's Alec, go. You're on. All right, all right. I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm Alec Cunningham. I'm number 2A. I got a twin brother. He's supposed to be – he was supposed to join, but uh, in typical fashion, he either has missed up something. He's in Germany, so he's – five or six hours ahead. We're going to give him the benefit of the doubt here. And I'm actually down at his house in Fort Lauderdale, but uh, I'm out at Mount Pleasant full time there. I'm a ship's captain with uh, the gray hulls that are tied up on the Cooper River, call them the Cape D classes. And uh, it's all manned by Merchant Marine. And we're going to be leaning on Joe to revive that Merchant Marine and get it going. Who's taking care of that ship right now? What's that? Who's taking care of the ship right now <laughs> since the captain's not there? Autopilot. A lot of great crew. A lot of great crew out there. Good answer. <laughs> yeah, right now I'm here taking care of Willie, Big Willie's pool here down in Fort Lauderdale. And uh, so maybe 2B will join us soon. Maybe. He'll be late, as usual. We definitely overslept. Let's, let's call it what it is. All right, Luke, that le le leads to you, man. <laughs> Luke Cunningham, number four, is uh, our parents affectionately refer to me as. Um, live in Mount Pleasant and uh, work in construction safety uh, here in the Charleston area. And uh, again, uh, leaning on Joe to help with our highway infrastructure and make our roadways safer. Um, also angry at Joe for making the rest of us feel uh, underdressed. You, you gotta tell everyone how long it took you to paint that shirt on, Luke? <clears throat> I actually had to have a shoehorn to get into this. <laughs> <laughs> I love you and John representing. Um, yeah. what, what, well, listen, we've got a few topics we're going to throw out. Uh, this is very informal, obviously. Uh, we can start, in, and one of the topics here was, was who is the best athlete. But I'd like to, I'd like to um, start off with who, who is the worst athlete um, and, and, and why, why Alec was so bad. John, <laughs> you want to weigh in there? Solid uh, burn. Solid burn. Dude, it's pouring down rain. My windows are down. I was yelling at somebody to shut them. Repeat the question. Why, it's why was Alec such a terrible athlete? Well, you know, Alec had the the makings of a great athlete. In fact, he could have been the best, Cunningham. But Alec had other interests. Alec was easily distracted by boats and girls and daisies in the outfield. out of the house at night. And, and, you know, he just didn't have the discipline that was required to become a great athlete. He had all the tools. What did we, we call that early him? on? What was his nickname growing up? Booger. Can we say that? I think you can. Yeah. All right. Alex, you want, Alex, take a second to respond. I was the only one who's ever told me he's won playing himself in one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> I'm undefeated. I'm undefeated. 
He doesn't do good, do well in team sports. Now, now look, uh, let's just get to the net, the ugliest form of free throws. Oh. And and what exact? What was wrong with Luke when he'd shoot those things? Luke, Luke was the only one. His that hands are like sausages. Look at him. You he can't shoot free throws dead. like that. He made Dad literally nervous every time he went to the to the line. He'd make Dad nervous. Well, he's not the only one, and here's why. Free throws are like public humiliation. It's like, all right, let's stop everything we're doing. Let's put a guy up to the line in front of everybody and let him shoot in complete silence and give him two chances, and I'd blow both of them. It's too much pressure. Luke, the only thing worse than that was when I uh, I thought it was a one. I thought it was one and one, and Michael Fralix was shooting. I jumped out there and blocked him out and got a technical. <laughs> I was thinking about that. Uh, only got to get a foul shooting a free throw. Yeah. Yep. I, I airballed two free throws my senior year of high school, if I remember correctly. People on the bench yeah. stand up and clap if uh, you hit if you drew a rim, Luke. Um, I did too. I, I would literally be sitting there clapping like a monkey. Who had, hey. had the most crooked follow through? Joe. 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 Joe remember the In shot basketball, we like to we like to say you should have the gooseneck. Joe had the the, 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 the twisted crane. Yeah, he had the softball. <laughs> He had the sloth sloth the gooseneck. He had the twisted crane. Yeah. I, I had to put a little extra spin on it to give me a little bit more time to get to the rim and get a rebound after it came off. That's right. So hey, Luke, you could stop, hey, Luke could stop those soccer balls, though, couldn't he? Hey, so we agreed Alec was the worst athlete? I think it's – I think it's – sorry, Alec. Sorry, Bob. I mean, but, but let's – let's, I'll take it. I mean, some, everybody's going to get hit on this. So I'll just go ahead and take the first now, one. Now, now, Alec, you excel so well in other things. Dad put it best. He's like, you know, Alec, I, you know, I remember a high school baseball game where Alec is out there in, uh, in the outfield in the uh, middle of the game, and he's out there uh, picking dandelions and uh, messing around with the outfield grass. And I was like, that's a, a, a complete uh, example of Alec in general. All right. Well, all right, well let's, let's, talk, let's talk about academics, though. Uh, we, we could be up on Alec all day long, and we probably will. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, we talk about – uh, the best student. Um, you. I, 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 no, <laughs> all right, we'll keep moving here. All right, yeah, <laughs> I was, I was let's, not. Let's, proceed, proceed. Hey, let's talk, John. Ron, you got, you got uh, uh, 32 kids. Uh, you know, we talk about. Uh, <laughs> I can't figure out why it keeps happening, man. I mean, I can't figure it out. <laughs> well, well let, let's talk about the benefits of growing up in a big family. If there's, you know, if there's uh, the benefits or the drawbacks of, of that. Well, Al, you got you got seventeen kids. How many kids? You know, how many other now? Depends. Maybe get another check. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, man. I, yeah. Hey, hey, is it per hey. kid? Bring it. Hey, thick skin. That, that, that's what it takes. I mean, look at John Ryan. He's the first person that's bleached his hair in ten years. Yeah. He has thick skin. He's got, rat, he's got a rat tail behind that head. Yeah. It, 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 it's like if, uh, yeah, it, it looks like if uh, that that guy got uh, from uh, the Food Channel got dehydrated. I mean, you can you we, can catch him every now and then staring at himself in this Zoom. You know, it looks like he's looking at the camera, but he's Bandy. staring down the whole box. I've actually Bandy's got all it all minimized. I'm focusing in on 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 Josh. He's actually here, but he's not on the screen. He's down here in the corner. He showed what? up. Hey, Josh, Josh made it. Luke. J J Luke, relax. I was choking. Joe, oh. the benefit of, of growing up in a big house is that you, 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 you're not allowed to take anything too personal because there's not enough time, there's not enough energy. Uh, it's business as usual. Something happens, somebody gets their feelings hurt. It's another day at the office, move on. We don't shut down the whole afternoon because uh, Luke got made fun of at school about his shirt he wore. It was too small. So just, you know... <laughs> That was the benefit of it, man. It was just, it was just rough, man. You didn't have time to get into your feelings about little things. It was just, oh snap! Whoa, look at there it. he is, Willie. Yeah, hey, Josh, glad, glad you can join. Good nothing. Good nothing. Uh, oh, boys. All right, I'll let you go. There he is. <laughs> Save the best for last. Jo Josh, you go ahead and interrupt, man. We, we, we need some intros and. Um, Where's he going? Maybe in Austria. Oh, okay. Is. Okay. Yeah. All right. Why are you Why are you over there, Josh? Um, visiting my wife's family. All right. Tell us about yourself and your family, Josh. We already did our spill. Hey, 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 Josh. Just say Just say no before you go into anything. You know, we're live. You know, we're live here. Um, 
you know. So, um, don't say anything too embarrassing. Joe looks like he's delivering the news. Austrian. How's Golden that? Bra- Golden Brow. This is a uh, sauce made in Salzburg. It's a beautiful golden ale. Let's <laughs> watch, 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 watch it right there. Is it tasty, Josh? Tastes great, Joe. Yeah. You know, it's you like it's seven brewed. o'clock there. It's it's game on for him. You know, it's brewed with the uh, the purity act, so there's no uh, preservatives, there's no uh, additives. It's just straight just terrible. out. Just terrible head. Honey, honey water. Get the worst student first before we move on, or best, whatever. Yeah. yeah let's go ahead and do it. Worst student. Um, Josh, you got some input there. It can't be me again. I think I think it would have to be Alec. Oh, Alec's yeah. definitely the worst student. Yeah. But why? But why? <laughs> John, do you like that answer? That was awesome. Alec, <laughs> Alec was always, I don't know, he, he has this massive imagination, so he's always off somewhere else in his head. He was either sailing in the Caribbean or, I don't know, thinking about how he's going to – Where he's going to take school Vogel for, for a date. Well, that's what happens when you drink a bottle of Robotus and go into chemistry class with Jenny Chumbler. You were following me. Oh, my God. Um, all right. All right. Most trouble. Who's the most troublesome one growing up? Alec. <laughs> no, don't do this to me, boys. Don't uh, do right. it. I, I, how, how about you do the second most troublesome? John Ryan. Well, are you talking about it growing up or continuation into no, adulthood? Just- no, Alec orchestrated the most chaos. I mean, um, no, it wasn't chaos. It, it was controlled. It was organized. It was smooth. Whoa! Who we got here? We got, whoa! Hold on. Oh, we got some special guests here. Hello. 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 Mom, Dad. Yeah. Mom. Mom. Yeah, I know. You usually can't. You can't hear us usually in person either. Um, Mom, you figured out Zoom. Yeah. Welcome to Zoom. You look like she's figuring you it out. You're just stoic there. I don't look. Pretty All right, good. you're just stoic there. Hey, so we're just we're just talking. I look like the good, like the good father. Uh, <laughs> you, you look like you look, look like, like Tom Wolf. Yeah, Tom Wolf or like a, a a mob boss. All right, I don't know if mom. You mom, got mom, you got mom on yet? I don't know if mom's muted or what. Are you guys in the same house? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Just, just checking. Uh, <laughs> hey, it's, it's come to this now. Hey, so, da- so Dad, the question is, who's the most trouble growing up? Who's the most trouble, you know, who's the most mischief? That's easy. Who? Ow! Oh! oh. <laughs> I'm going to nail every one of these. It Alex got it got it got better at, in the in the descending age category. Uh-huh. They kept getting better and better, and you know there's a uh, say a little and, lou- say a little louder, Dad, so people can hear you. I said uh, it got better with the descending age category, and um, there's a saying here in this small town that we finally got it right with Joe. Yeah, I'd have to disagree. I agree. All right, guys. You're also out of, you're also out of the will. I would say, Dad, that with the last one, you just got mellow and you gave up. You stopped putting the Lazy. Screws Lazy. Joe got it, Joe got it easy because you just you lost interest after five of them. I get it. I got five. That, I, I got six, and I know exactly what he did. At the last yeah. one, he said, Go do your own thing. Here are the keys to the car. Don't forget to pay the water bill. When I came home from college or wherever I was. Joe didn't have a curfew. Joe had his own car. That's because I Joe worked when he wanted. Yeah. Joe had a joke job at the pharmacy that he showed up Joe whenever he wanted. Man. He left whenever he wanted. When he was was he also, yeah. Why did I get that job? Oh, hey, Mom. Joe, Joe, Joe also got sugar coated cereal. Yeah, yeah, he did. Hey, yeah, he did. I, agree with, I, I agree with Joe on this. Joe did follow the rules. So, I mean, you, the guys, rest you, of you guys made it so easy. All the dumb stuff y'all did. Luke yeah. and I were having to sit back. And, 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 and oh, trailblazing, Joe. We were trailblazing. Pioneers, yeah. Alec. Yeah. No, I think Alec. I think I think the question should be who did the most time. Yeah. Yeah. Dad, Dad, Dad who 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 did you ground the most often? Say again. Who did you ground the most often? Alec. <laughs> <laughs> I I called that too. All right. I need to, I need to swing this. We gotta swing this, boys. <laughs>
what, what other forms? Now, let, 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 ask me who's the most improved, and I'll say Alec. All right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna move on. Uh, <laughs> well, Alec, was a, Alec was a lovable rogue. What about the forms of punishment you had, Dad? The why, why, don't you, why don't you speak to that? You know, there's grounding, of course, but what other ways did you punish? Well, uh, well, we started off with spankings, and then when you got too big for that. We went to groundings. Uh, we have five children. You don't have a lot of time. You got to punish and move on. You know, you can't have this time out stuff. It lingers on. The books in the back. And uh, the books, the weights in the backpack. That that's me. Uh, a couple of times. No, no hold on. explain uh, that. Explain that for the people. Explain that for the people listening. Weights in the backpack. How about the letter to Mama T that ever went out? Oh yeah, okay. yeah. What? Why don't each brother explain one of Dad's best punishments? It. Tell a story about one of Dad's punishments. Dad, I think Dad, that'd be Dad, worth. Dad, say the weights in the backpack punishment. That, and that's a great letter, story. Letter to our grandmother. Okay. Don't forget your mom here. Um, hey, mom. Hey. Hey, you mama. Want me to explain the weights in the backpack. Yes. I just remember uh, Luke says it was him. Joe says it was him. Maybe I did it two or three times. Uh, I just got a couple of weights, ten pound weights. Put them in your backpack. Told you, you're gonna to have to carry it with you wherever you go because you're, you're causing a, you're become you're a burden to me because of your conduct. So I'm gonna be a burden to you, and I want this with you everywhere you go. I can clarify. I can clarify that if you need. What about the if, letter? To, what her letter to her grandmother? You know, you know, you know speak to that. What? what yeah. That? Well, we live in a neighborhood that had a lot of kids probably 10 or 12 at one time. My, uh, I saw some four letter words showing up on the pavement with crayon and chalk. I didn't know who was doing it. You really want me to tell this story? Yeah. I didn't know who was doing it, but I suspected uh, y'all always prime suspects in my book. And so I got you in here in the study and got you a pencil and paper. I mean, y'all were in age like 12 down to five. We were all right. And I said, I want you, I've seen some of these obscene words showing up in the neighborhood. You think it's cool. I'm going to tell you it's not cool. I'm going to show you how easy it is. I want each of you to take this sheet of paper and I want you to write all the obscene words you can think about on it right now. We're going to get it out of your system. All oh, y'all start giggling, looking at each other, looking on each other's page, writing these words down, all giggling. I said, now, I want you to put your name on it. This is where somebody should have got suspicious. <laughs> but all being rocket scientists, all of you put your incriminating name on this sheet of paper where you've written these four letter words. I said, okay, I'm gonna take them up. I took them all up and I said, I'm gonna mail this to Mama T and see what she thinks about them. My grandmother. Mama T being your mother's mother, your grandmother, you all of you idolized. Oh man, those laughters and giggles and smiles turned to wailing and moaning and gnashing your tea. Everybody's jumping, trying to, Josh charged me, tried to snatch it away from me. And I never told you any different. You made Thanksgiving really awkward, Dad. Thanks. <laughs> hey, hey Josh, and I, Josh and I were on our way to death row. He locked us up. Took us down to the Kentucky State Prison and locked us up. Josh yeah, I was in the screen and I heard these guys telling him to shut up. It's pretty traumatic. I've got a lot. I've got, yeah, I've got tons of those punishments, man. They got some really good ones. I mean, Dad, the, the Playboy magazine that you found in the closet upstairs that we would get out and look at and giggle when you weren't around. You took the centerfold out and you hung it on the mailbox out in front of the house right at the bus stop for the other six kids and the yeah, whole entire awesome. bus to see when they pulled up at 730 the next morning to pick us up. All the high schoolers on there were hooping and hollering. The middle school kids were kind of questioning it. And then the, all the elementary kids were traumatized for life. They had a big Bucks and, you know, cover girl on there. Uh, DSS would have definitely had us out of your hands today. What was the purpose of that? I don't remember. Well, we were, we were I don't know, we were hiding and, and looking at, you know, this Playboy magazine. And you thought, well, we shouldn't be doing that. So I'm going to show you. You shouldn't be doing it. And it, it kind of embarrassed us, I think. I think one of your tactics was embarrassing and shaming us into not doing things. I mean, that was the whole thing with the letter. And then. A lot of you know you're all fathers. A lot of it's instinctive. You just go with your instincts. 
What about giving Josh like 20 hours of community service at the ambulance shelter? Was that legal? You like actually gave him community service, but it didn't go on the books. How did you pull that off? Yeah. I told your car. <laughs> Josh took the car, car after school a, at 14 road. and totaled it. Hey, 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 hey Joe, can I, can I share my two favorites? Uh, yeah, yeah, real quick, and then we're going to have to close out here. Okay, so um, Dad would never ground us for an amount of time. He would basically look at something like a, a Shakespeare play or like a speech by Abraham Lincoln and figure out how long it took to memorize it. So we were never grounded for like uh, three days, four days. He would look at it and be like, this should take them six days to memorize. So we were grounded until we memorized like uh, the Gettysburg Address, which took me, I think, two days or uh, you know, third stanza, Henry V. So now I know all these inconsequential um, uh, literature uh, quotes and speeches that I shouldn't. Um, and the second was, how can Josh had done something wrong, which was often, and as punishment, dad thought he'd embarrass him. So he got him out of school about 20 minutes early each day and had him wash the ambulances at the ambulance shelter. And the ambulance shelter was right next to the high school. So everybody cruising out of the high school at 3 p.m. would go by the Cunningham brothers washing out the ambulances. And I thought that was me on my diversion program. Josh tried to get Hey, whatever it was, it worked. Josh was getting Bobby Fisher of chess because of that. You know, he used to play the guys at the shelter. I did, I did. I learned a lot with criminals. Listen, what the best, the best, the best dad um, punishment I thought was when, when Joe was in, you know, when mom was pregnant with Joe, she had the big belly. She was slaving over the kitchen stove around five o'clock and she asked Alec to set the table for her. And Alec ran out the back door to go play basketball with us outside. And uh, dad came home from a long day and was, mom was crying. It was just so upset with Alec. Alec, I asked him to do a lot of things and he, he ran out there. He's playing basketball now. Uh, and dad came out and he called for the basketball and he threw in the basketball and he gave it to Alec and said, next three days, I want you to wear this up underneath your shirt. So you, you can feel like you, you know what it feels like to be pregnant. And Alec had to wear the basketball underneath his shirt for, for three days. And he's like, I'll be, I'll be yeah, watching too. You, you want to remove it. Uh, that's I true. I swear to you. Yeah, it's I, know, true. I, know it's, I know it's true because I didn't, I didn't wear it. You could hear his Mercedes coming. You could hear that diesel straining coming down the road, and that's when you'd run and get the basketball and stick it up underneath your shirt. He wasn't sneaking, anybody, he wasn't sneaking up on anybody with that diesel pusher, was he? Mom. No, he wasn't. What, what a principle, though. What a principle. Yeah. It's are, you gonna, are you going to ask Mom who the funniest is? Say it again. We actually, Luke, Luke want to know who the funniest brother is, Mom. No. Oh. The fun oh, well, Luke. All, all of you guys are funny. Luke, Go ahead, Luke, Luke is the funniest. What? The best singer is John Ryan. Alec and Joe cannot sing. They should Wait. never sing at a party or playing guitars. Fair and enough. Wait, John's the best singer? What about Josh? Ooh, Luke, Luke didn't like that, Mom. Luke, Luke did not like that. This guy's got albums. Yeah, yeah, Played yeah, sold out yeah, shows. Yeah. He's a legend in yeah, Charleston. Did you ever think, Joe? I can't remember Joe getting a thrashing. I can remember Josh getting, getting no, smacked around like, like, a, the like last a, year, a... The last year runner. Runner was in high school, of course, we knew Joe being the Boy Scout and the pretty good kid. We could trust him as we couldn't with you guys. So we said, Joe, this is your year. Anything you want to do, that's fine with us. No curfew. It worked out pretty well, didn't it, Joe? We called it the <laughs> year, of, year of the schmo. Year of the Joe. Joe. Yeah. yeah. Wanted, Wanted to know if it still applied. I said, no, Joe. Just that last year, that was all. And, and, and on that, Mom, uh, Dad, before we, uh, we end this up, tell the story about Joe's uh, car disappearing over the hill whenever he went to college. About him doing what? Whenever Joe left for college, what you thought when the last one left? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, uh, Joe was pulling out of the driveway to drive to Charleston. It was, uh, I guess, August. And... Uh, I waited to him goodbye. I went down to the end of the driveway, drive, waited him as he drove off, and I turned around. And all my boys had left home, and I thought, what, what was I doing before my life was interrupted by these guys 25 years ago? 
<laughs> and it was really a strange feeling. There was no more ball games. There was no more obligations. There was no more having to ske schedule things so that you spend as much time with them as you can. And every parent does that when they send their last child off. Uh, and mom. Uh, not really every one. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> hey, but dad, dad, little do you know, here comes Josh and Alec dropping out of college the week later. And they're back. No, we finished up the semester. We didn't drop out. We finished the semester. Oh, hey, hey, it, hey, it, it was, it was John, take over be, this. Be, be that as it may, listen, we're, we're going to start again the same order. Uh, John, run on down to mom and dad. And, you know, we brought everyone in here to, uh, you know, tell some funny stories, have a good time, but also talk about our campaign and about getting people engaged and getting people involved. And so my question to each of you is give a, you know, a short pitch and, uh, on, on why folks should be signing up, getting engaged, being involved as we, as we near November and Election Day. John Ryan, we'll give it to you, man. Well, there's a lot I can say about that, but I'll try to keep it short. Uh, this is a huge uh, election. It's a huge year. There's a lot of stuff going on in our country, a lot of stuff going on specific to the low country. Um, and I, I think there's no other candidate right now that is as versatile and as personable and uh, who has the work ethic that my little brother does. I think if you're in this type of situation, uh, socially like we are as a country and, and a lot of the you know political issues we're struggling with right now you need somebody there that's going to be able to relate to everybody and I've, I've seen joe work with all kinds of people throughout his life i mean I've, I've watched him for a long time and he's never met strangers he's able to come into a place and have them loving him in a few minutes uh he listens to people and i think one of his greatest gifts is uh he, he's a problem solver but he's also very uh very relatable person. He's got a good heart and he, he, he works from that heart. And so I think uh, we need to have somebody uh, in office who's gonna be able to, to work across the aisle, but also uh, get to know and want to know everybody and listen to everybody's struggles because we have a lot going on in our country right now. And so I think that's why we need him there. Awesome, thanks. Alec, take it to you, man. I, I would encourage people to vote, uh, not for the party, but for the person and um joe is is the same person you know don't be fooled by what you may read in the paper or see on the when it's time for commercials take a look at this gather us, go out and see him and 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 understand that joe is the same person um at the end of a dirt road at a fish fry in west kentucky as he is in a casino at monte carlo with the tuxedo on by the way you still owe me for that tuxedo rental in Monaco, uh, Joe, we're going to talk about that later, and, <laughs> and the 50-year-old bourbon that you got um, on me. But uh, Joe's the same guy um, in, in all settings, and that's – so I encourage you to vote for the person. Josh, over to you, man, chronological. J Joe's the last person to talk in a room. Joe, Joe is exceptional at listening, taking in, retaining information. Uh, you know, uh, uh, before he talks about his opinion or whatever. So he's – reflective and I will say of all the Cunninghams he's the one that would and maybe it's because he was the, the little guy getting picked on or he would he, he'd be a little suspicious of anything so he takes it in he, he uh, disseminates information well uh, very sharp very uh, boy scout um, I think if I was a young po uh, political activist or someone that wanted to get involved with the campaign right now in, in our times right now getting behind a, a moderate like Joe, Democrat, and Democrat, Republican doesn't really matter, you know, get by some, on somebody who, who uh, whose voice and is the, is kind of, I think, right with every American. Um, Joe has got the best hair of any politician. All right, good, good looking. All right, all right Josh. I mean, he's a looking. handsome dude. No, man, I'm serious. He's, he's handsome. He's, he's a good guy. He's going to listen. He's going to do anything too crazy. to keep the cart right in the middle of the road. Moving on then. Thanks, Josh. Luke, you're up. Um, I guess two points. Like first, is, you know, uh, pragmatism. Um, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Um, uh, the economy is it's kind of a unstable ground. I was up there whenever you started this job, uh, figuring out what you had to do as a congressman. I was up there a couple of months ago and watching you walk the halls and talking to everybody from both sides. The relationships you developed 
if you think right now in the middle of a pandemic in the middle of what's going on in the United States is a great time to elect somebody new to figure out how to do this job, uh, I completely disagree with it. But more importantly, like I guess politically, um, if you want to vote a Republican into office, vote for a Republican. If you want to vote a Democrat in office, vote for a Democrat. If you want to vote somebody that will work with both sides and somebody that's a moderate, then, then this is the person to do it. Appreciate it, Luke. <laughs> Mom, Dad. Okay. Joe has the energy that we older people need to see up in Washington. He has not only the energy, but he has the passion for his job. So you want to uh, get behind somebody who has those qualities and, know, and you know that they can do the work in Washington. In addition to talking to the average Joe in the low country or the uh, grandma on the beach, Joe can relate to so many different people. And uh, he has the qualities I think that um, would make us all proud. And you've done so, so far in these uh, years you've been up there, short years, but anyway, uh, it's uh, those two things I think are so important. Yeah. Um, well, I'm gonna paraphrase Abraham Lincoln a little bit. He said, bad things happen when good people do nothing. And apathy is the greatest evil. Come we see the bad things around us is because good people have not become involved. And it's pretty evident the two years that Joe's been in Washington, this is a good person. Uh, this He's kept his word. He's reached across the aisle. He's created a lot of good spirit between the parties. And he's got a record where he's fulfilled his promises. So, um, it's very important for apathy uh, not to erode our process. So I would invite all those people who uh, have been not been engaged before this is the time for all good men and women to come to the aid of their country. Thank, thanks, Dad, Mom, uh, the brothers, uh, everyone for joining us. About closing it out, I want to ask two things of, of everyone who's watching, everyone who's joined us tonight. Um, first and foremost, uh, election experts have, have named this one of the top three most competitive races in the entire country. And um, we need to get our message out. And unlike my opponent, we don't take any money from PACs. Um, in fact, just last month, I'm already driving mom away here at the last bit. Um, just, the phone, last, the phone ring. Just, just last month, we had to send, uh, we sent $25,000 in PAC checks back because every single dollar that comes into our coffers has a name and a face attached to it. Because I think it's important we represent the people, not, not corporations, not PACs, not special interests. So uh, we, we, we purely just rely, rely on individuals. So if you're watching this, and you, you feel compelled to help us out, get help us get our message out, click on the link in the box, donate five, 10, $2,500, $2, whatever you can give. Every little bit helps. And this is gonna be highly competitive and we need, we need everything we can, uh, we can get. Second ask is, I know that this pandemic has changed the way the campaigns run and how the, the way that we operate, the way we all live our normal lives. Um, but the fact is we still rely on volunteers. We still rely on folks to send out text messages, make phone calls, uh, you know, ho host virtual house parties, uh, fundraisers. There's so much that each and every one of y'all can do. And so we have another link up there to sign up, to volunteer, to get involved. Uh, because the truth is, this is gonna take each and every one of us to pull this thing across the finish line come November. Um, you know, we're all in this together. We'll all get through this together as well. I wanna thank everyone for joining on, especially my family. Uh, Mom, Dad, uh, Luke, John, Ryan, Josh, Alec. Uh, great time here. Great time here. Thanks again for everything, and thanks to everyone else for joining here. Signing off. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, brother. Love you. Yeah. See you. See you guys. See you guys.